Blessings, beloved. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. And no man comes to the Father but through him. He is seated on the throne right now as I speak to you. Jesus Christ, the righteous. Even as I say his name, I come under spiritual attack in the unseen realm. Yes, we wrestle. Even to say his name, we wrestle. When we're going through trials and tribulations. But this is good. We rejoice. For we are soldiers of Christ. And we fight to bring the light to the world. Or into sight. We fight to bring the light into sight. The sight of the inhabitants of the earth. They want to squeeze the light out of us. Like a constrictor snake. Like a boa constrictor. Because they hate Jesus. You hear them. In passing you hear them take his name. In vain like it's nothing. You hear them OMGs and this and that and the other thing. It's all so that they can be disobedient. That spirit of blasphemy. Rearing its ugly head in society. How dare they take the name of the living God with irreverence and disrespect. Woe unto them. You see, yesterday I made a video, it's on my channel, on YouTube, it's called, the video first is called, Call Out the Devil's Bluff, Jesus is My Lord. And the channel is called Word on the Street Ministries and it's slowly, the subscribership is slowly but surely rising, isn't that beautiful? People are subscribing to the channel. And they're getting the word of God. So this channel is becoming a church for those who are following the videos. Isn't that amazing? So we can build a church. Even in this evil day, we can build a church. Somebody watching and hearing the word of God is the church of Jesus Christ. It doesn't have to be 20,000 people stacked in, jammed into a church like this. All in their Sunday best and to have no relationship with God, good, bad or indifferent. They think they know Jesus, but they're just there for show and for the networking possibilities. And to fit into the culture so they don't st stick out like a sore thumb. The Chinese have a proverb, the nail that sticks out gets hammered. So they're all just trying to blend in. But we want to have a relationship, an actual real relationship with Jesus Christ. Amen. They're in their false anti-Christian churches going through the motions. Come out of there, come out, come out, come out and come to the Lord Jesus Christ. You see, they might say, well, Jesus is in that church. It's Christianity, it's Catholicism. What do you mean? What's the difference? People have asked me this question. Now, I don't know whether they were being genuine or not, but the point is that people have been deceived into believing I was one of them, that Catholicism is Christianity. It's not Christianity. These will be relatively quick fire, but I invite you to read the Bible to make sure that what I'm saying is true. They say, the Bible says, call no man father. What do they call the priest? What do they call the Pope? They call him even Holy Father. Capital H, capital F. How dare they? The Bible says, God is, let God be true and every man a liar. They call their Pope the Holy Father who is infallible. The mouthpiece of God in the earth. Well, which God are they talking about then? Well, surely they're talking about Satan. The divining serpent. What does, the, what does Vatican mean? Let's have a look. The headquarters of the Pope. What does Vatican mean? It means... The word Vatican literally means divining serpent. Come on, folks. It's in plain view. There they are. Yeah, we know Jesus in the church pews. Stacked in like sardines. Pray, pay and obey. Sticking money in the basket. Yeah, I did my bit. Now I'm off to get the spuds. Sitting there with a hangover. Not obeying the word of God. Couldn't care less whether they know God or not. 
half of them are involved in the in the witchcraft and, and covens anyway bringing their children up in it sure this is an abomination before the lord this is an apostate church this is nothing to do with jesus christ so let's wake the nations up catholicism is not christianity it's paganism with a little bow of christianity to deceive people that's nothing to do with our precious lord nothing Call no man father. Okay, thank you, Father. How are you, Father? Holy Father, infallible he is. Open the divining serpent in the Vatican there. Come on, folks, wakey, wakey. For a thousand years they've been pulling the wool and lifting shirts. And now he's want to start getting married in their churches again and throw money back in the basket. Why? Because a little bit of time has passed. Or because the next generation don't know what's coming. What's going to hit them. Which is it, do you think? It's been concealed. The evil's been concealed from the next generations. So they're brought up in this thing and ingratiated into the church. Signed up for it. Now listen. It is straddled, sorry, sporadic for a reason. It is sporadic so that time passes and people forget. New generations come along and they're relatively naive and ignorant as to what has happened to previous generations. And they do this for a reason. It's like a heartbeat of deception. Boom. Time passes, people get ignorant. Boom. Time passes, people get ignorant. Boom. It's cyclical. So let's think. If the Bible says let God be true and every man a liar what does that mean does that mean we can't trust any priest well no if you're jumping from extreme <clears throat> to extreme you're going to try and extrapolate the extreme instead of extrapolating the meaning you say well hang, hang on a minute it has to be either this or the complete opposite end of the spectrum why does it hang on a second now you have to get context a man can speak the truth but he's incapable of being perfectly truthful because of his fallen nature. So why is it said that God be true and every man a liar? Because men make mistakes. Sometimes they make genuine errors. So we don't have God on speed dial. No, so we refer to his word. We refer to his word, written word that he sent through the apostles and prophets. Okay? So if all we have from God and the only contact we have with him in terms of actually having a word from him is the written inerrant word of, of God, the Bible, the Holy Bible, why are churches disobeying that and calling themselves Christian? Well, to deceive, isn't it? And they have such doctrines as the Catholic Catechism. The Bible says, add nothing. To the word of God. Nor subtract or detract from it. Take nothing from it. Add nothing to it. It is the word of God. It's inerrant and it doesn't need any man to embellish it. To add to it. The Catholic Catechism. Extra biblical text. Asserting to contextualize the Bible. And fill in the gaps where the Bible left out. Come on folks. Come on now. You're going to go back to the rapists? The child murderers? That's where you're going to sit in the pews and put throw the money in their baskets? Really? Purgatory. A place where you go to pay your, your debt before you get out of there and you're allowed into heaven later on. Well, yeah, why not? Isn't that the way the prison works? You go there for a few years, you get out. God is perfect. His judgments are eternal. After the day of judgment, wherever he sends you is your eternal place of abode. It's where you will be forever. Either in the kingdom of Israel or departed from him into gloomy outer darkness and the hell of fire, the lake of fire. So listen, 
purgatory denies the very gospel itself. Jesus came because all men had sinned, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. That's the word of God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I think it's Romans 3.23. Just double check that for you. There was a time when the Bible didn't have uh, chapter, or, sorry, verses. Like numbered. Yep. Yeah. yeah, it is, yep. Yeah. Romans 3.23 For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God or fall short of the glory of God. So that means that everybody was on their way to hell. So Jesus had to come to pay for the sins of mankind by laying down his life if he wanted to save us. And he did. So he laid his life down. No man took it from him. He chose to come and become a little lower than the angels live a perfectly sinless life and come and lay down his life for our sins. OK, so if Jesus needed to come to die for every man's sins because every man was headed to hell, purgatory denies the need for Jesus to come and pay for every man's sins if a man could go to purgatory and pay them off himself and then get into heaven later. So purgatory is a gospel denying doctrine. Basically denies the gospel. So it can't be Christian. Therefore, it is apostate and heretical and the Catholic Church is not Christian. It's not a Christian church, folks. It's time to wake up. It is the anti-Christian beast. It is the beast structure, the beast system. It is the devil's church. It is a guise and a camouflage that he has used to propagate and make paganism and pantheism pervasive within the nations and calling it Christianity. Why did he call it Christianity? So that he could infiltrate the Christian church because that's what he did. The Christian church pre-existed the pagan abomination we see that's within the Christian church. Do you understand what I'm saying? So there was a Christian church that was supported by the, the government. Then they got into that structure and defiled it promoting gradually little bit by little bit more and more pagan um, bi biblically antithetical practices so things that would deny and contradict the bible they brought them in little bit by little bit little bit drips and drabs drips and drabs they brought them in over the generations so that people wouldn't really know they were coming in and the people that did know they were coming in were in on it anyway you see? So eventually children were being brought up in these rites of passage like baptism, which is against the baptism of the Bible. The Bible says that you have to know you're being baptised because you have to have a belief in Jesus Christ, otherwise the baptism means nothing. But they sprinkle, the priest, so-called priest, sprinkles a bit of water on the baby's head. The baby cries and everybody says, hey! But what's happened? That's not a biblical baptism. Study the word of God. The eunuch asked, what stops me from being baptised? And the eunuch was asked, "If or told, if you believe with all of your heart, then you may be baptised. But how does a baby believe with all their heart? So here's another paganistic ritual or rite of passage that has nothing to do with Christianity neither communion nor confirmation because the young person is altogether too young to realise what's going on unless they're a coven initiate who knows that what they're doing is satanic do you understand the catholic church is the church of satan it is satan's church not jesus christ's understand this the Vatican means the divining serpent. The great dragon of old. He's a serpent. He wants to deceive you. So that you would burn in hell forever. Amen. So don't be deceived. So I've given you many. <coughs> excuse me. Biblically antithetical doctrines. And practices that are um, partaken of. And promoted 
in the Catholic Church. Catholic itself means all welcoming or universal. But Jesus said, few are chosen. Many are called, but few are chosen. They're saying, well, everybody's welcome here. Just throw your money in the basket. Come all ye. So they, they respond to that sometimes with, well, doesn't Jesus, doesn't Jesus want everybody to repent? What do you mean? Yes, but not everybody will repent. Many are called, but few are chosen. But there are many, many, many people still sitting in the Catholic Church. And you have all these fake denominations of fake Christianity, New Age Christianity. 100,000 people sitting in a church think, talking about they know Jesus. And they've got dangly earrings in and tight trousers and their f female form is on show. That's a mockery. That's the satanic church. That's Satan. It's subtle. Even in the music, the so-called Christian music, there are subtle... Um, cap tips if you like to Satan and the principles he prom promotes they're subtle in ways they could be either addressed to Jesus or addressed to Satan they're that subtle do you see what I'm saying to you so addressed or attributed What I want to say to you is this. Not that anything that's legitimately attributed to Satan can be legitimately attributed to Jesus. But they can sing things to Satan that would give the impression initially that it could be be sung to Jesus. Understood? It's very subtle in the wording of the song. Of these worship tunes, these New Age Christian worship tunes. But they're worshipping Satan. So the Catholic Church is a pagan church. Make no graven images nor bow down to them. They make statues of saints. I'm a saint. You shouldn't make a statue from of me nor bow down to it. Why would you do that? Anybody who believes in Jesus is a saint. So why would you make a statue? And bow down to that. When the angels say, no, I'm a servant as you, don't bow down to me, don't do that. Get up, don't do that. I'm a servant like you. But they have stained glass windows with supposed to be images of Jesus when they don't even know what he looked like. Statues of Mary when they don't know what she looked like. And they're bowing down to these things. Isn't it more likely that the image they have in the stained glass window is Satan? What do you think? Do you think they'd know what he looked like? Wake up, folks. Don't you think that this, what they're calling saints is more likely to be satanic demigods? Of old, in Greek mythology? Do your research. There are those who say they resemble them uncannily. There's an uncanny resemblance between those that are said to be um, saints of the Catholic sort and the demi-gods who are now demons disembodied of Greek mythology. They brought in Egypt and Greece and paganism through the Catholic Church and they're worshipping Satan in that abomination yes the Templars pulled the wool that's what they've done to you the Jesuits pulled the wool they went into the nations killed the Christians and erected that abomination that's what they did and they went into nations and they took over the place and they said right we're going to build your schools and all they twisted their arm and offered they couldn't refuse we're going to build schools or build a church and move build a town around it so Satan built his church but called it Christianity what kind of a God 
needs to attribute worship that's supposed to be to him to another that's no god at all that's an abomination of desolation it's an abomination that's the beast system the satanic church mixed with the satanic government and they want to make that universal now so they're bringing all of the false world religions in the, in that they're not actually attributed to the most high god but they're attributed to demons hinduism has has hundreds of thousands of so-called gods but they're now talking about hinduism judaism catholicism which they call christianity but of course we know it's not hinduism buddhism you name it they say well, hold on, we're all just worshiping the same god um why don't we just come together so now you have i think it was a hindu god being wheeled out into a catholic church i mean they're not hiding it it's absolutely abominable but it goes to show that the catholic church has nothing to do with christianity sure what um concord is there between jesus's church and buddhism or jesus's church and hinduism so catholicism has nothing to do with jesus so when they come out and they say ah oh, look sure we're all just worshiping the same god we just do it differently they're telling the truth but their god is satan it's not jesus their god is the dark one the evil one it's not jesus don't be fooled don't be deceived by that many will be many have been historically and look at the fruits fruits of that tree they were raping their children sending their daughters over because they couldn't keep their flies zipped sending their daughters to work in laundries and killing the child the love child so the, ch the daughter couldn't talk about it and the child wasn't around as evidence for the misbehavior of the one who should know better these are despicable individuals who refuse to repent who continue on in their evils serving the beast satan trying to brush the fallout of their sins under the carpet they don't need to do that so much they don't need to dig mass graveyards in uh, on church grounds anymore they just send them to the abortion clinic these are hideous before the living god hideous folks it is time to wake up and come to Jesus before it is too late it's time to wake up the wrath of God does not sleep he's a righteous and holy God come to him before it's too late you see when Satan's bluff is called out he starts talking soberly then come on now why what's he saying your time is running out could get ugly for you well let me say something to Satan I don't fear you we're sent into this world as sheep to the slaughter we know why we're here we're poured out a living sacrifice we don't fear satan or his systems or those who choose to serve him and harm the innocent that don't resist them i say innocent as in those who have not committed any real time or present or current crimes against them but they would falsely attribute them to them so that they can bring harm upon them falsely accusing people like their father the devil but let me tell you i'm not afraid of them for fear not he who can kill the flesh but rather fear he who can kill both flesh and soul in hell be wise repent the bible says in romans 10 9 it says if you confess with your mouth that jesus is lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. There's only one true Christian church. And that is those who believe in Jesus Christ and follow his word. And seek to, to the best of their ability, to please Jesus. Blessings, beloved. A holy kiss.